Back for Tatter Productions! Ooh. Oh yeah! We're doing letter A, and the question for letter A is the demand for a particular breakfast cereal is given by, a, by the demand equation Px plus 50p equal to 16,000. That's Px plus 50p equal to 16,000. Where x, thousands of boxes are demanded when p cents is the price per box. Price per box is equal to 1.60 dollar and sixty cents. And the rate the rate at which the increasing rate of cent per each week is zero that's P prime by the way. P prime is zero point four dollars per week. So what we're gonna have to do next so what we're gonna have to do next is look for the X, which is the thousand the boxes that are demanded. So I'm gonna substitute the value of the P's 1.60x plus 50 times 1.6 equal to 16,000. So 50 times 1.6 is 80. So you transpose that, it becomes 1.60x equal to 16,000 minus 80. Then you divide everything by 1.6. So that's 16,000 minus 80 is equal to 15,920 divided by 1.60. That is... 9,950. That's the demand for boxes. So the next thing we're going to look for is the what the question asked us to look for at the beginning. Find the rate of change in the demand. To get the rate of change in the demand, you'll, and you'll have to get the x prime in the equation. So you'll have to get the x prime of this. So you'll have to use the product rule which will eventually end up in px prime plus xp prime plus 50 because the derivative of 50p is just 50 and the derivative of 16,000 is 0 so you're gonna have to that we've had some technical difficulties. So after doing the product rule, you're gonna have to input the values that you have. So that's 1.6x prime plus 9,950 times 0.4, which is the change of the, the change of the cents per week. Plus 50 equal to zero. So after that, 9,000, the 9,950 times 0.4 is equal to 3,980. So 1.6x prime plus 3,980 plus 50, which is equal to 4,030. So you're going to have to transpose that so you can divide everything by the constant of the x prime to get the x prime. So 1.6x prime go to negative 4030 divided by 1.6. So x prime is equal to plus that by 50, then divide it by 1.6, which is equal to negative. 2518.75 This is the rate of change in the demand Pisa
nigga. Potato. A bacterial cell is spherical in shape. If the radius of the cell is increasing at the rate of 0.01 micrometers per, per day, so dr over dt is equal to 0.01 micrometers per day. When it is 1.5 micrometers, so radius 1.5, what is the rate of the increase of volume of the cell at that time? dv over dt. So spherical in shape. Radius of 1.5 and increasing at 0 0.01 micrometers per day. So the formula for this is V equals 4 pi r cube over 3. So we got the derivative dv over dt 4 pi 3 r squared dr over dt over 3. Cancel out dv dt 4 pi r squared dr dt that's it and we substitute the radius the dr dt we substitute the, the things dv dt is equal to 4 pi 1.5 squared times 0 0.01 dv over dt is equal to 1.5 squared times 0 0.01 times 4 pi so the answer is 0 0.28 28 what is the rate mm micrometers per day. Thank you. So, today we're going to be answering letter C. Uh, the problem is, a man 5 feet tall walks at the rate of 4 feet per second directly away from a street light, which is 20 feet above the street. At what rate is the length of his shadow changing? So, you can illustrate this. So, this is the street light. 20 feet, and this is the man, 5 feet. So he's walking away at the rate of 4 feet per second, and yeah. Okay, so what you're gonna try to look for here is this. Um, this is the rate at which the shadow is changing as the 5 foot man walks away from the 20 foot street light. So, since you using the similar triangle theorem you can say that these two are proportionate so you can label them as a1 and a2 and this being b1 and the inner one being b2 so you can you can write this as a1 over b1 is equal to a2 over b2 then you just um, cross multiply this and becomes a1 b2 is equal to a2 b1 then basically you just get the derivative of these and you use the product rule which is this becomes a1 prime b2 plus a1 b2 prime is equal to a2 prime b1 plus a2 b1 prime now all you need to do is plug in the values. So a1 prime is actually zero because the height of the man does not change and since a1, uh, the height of the street lamp doesn't change, so does also the height of the man. So a2 prime and a1 prime are completely disregarded. So whatever b2 is, it doesn't matter. It's already zero plus a1, which is 20 feet, b2 prime is equal to a2 prime, like I said, 0 plus a2 b1 prime and a2 is 5 feet and b1 prime is 4 feet per second what you can you so you just simplify this becomes 20 and you divide everything 
b2 prime is equal to 1 feet per second. That's basically it. And you can even find, you, there's, an even, there's an easier way to do this. Since they're similar right, they're similar right triangles and they're completely proportionate. So 5 feet is 1 fourth of 20 feet. So you can just get 1 fourth of 4 feet to get this answer. Which basically makes it correct. Yeah. Question D. A particle is moving around the ellipse 4x squared plus 16y squared is equal to 64. At any time t, its x and y coordinates are given by x of t is equal to 4 cos t and y of t is equal to 2 sin t. The first question asked is what is the rate, at what rate is the particle's distance to the point 2, 0 changing at any time t? So it's asking at any time t. So basically this, this is our given. We have a 2, 0 point. We have this equation. We are told these two, x and y. x is equal to 4 cos t and y is equal to 2 sin t. So if we derivative those, we have a x prime is equal to 4 sin t. since the derivative of cos is negative sine and y prime is equal to 2 cos t because derivative of sine is cos okay let's move on so since it's asking for the rate of the distance we use the distance formula so distance formula is as you see d is equal to the square root of x squared minus x oh sorry not x squared the square root of x of 2 minus x of 1 squared plus quantity y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. So if you want to take out the square root, you just square the d. Okay, let's move on to step 1. So we take the derivative. What do we take? We take the derivative of this one. So the, it's as you see, 2d, d derivative of d over derivative of t is equal to 2 quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1 dx over dt plus 2 quantity y sub 2 minus y sub 1 dy over dt. So we're, why do you think, um, so what happens here is that we use, we get the derivative of this and this, oops sorry, there's a squared there, there. You get the derivative of these, but then we see, however, that this is only one. Why is this only one when there are two there? So we use the chain rule, and we have to know, we have to keep in mind that x sub one and x sub and y sub one are both constants, and that's why this is supposed to be supposed to be dx over dt plus zero. So we just omit the zero. Next, we isolate d d over dt. So basically, you just divide that, and then cancel out the twos. And this is a cleaner version. This is your final for step one. So you keep that. You just keep it. We're not going to use it for now. Just keep it. Next, step two. Now, since we have a D there, and we don't know what D is, we look for D. I'll move the paper up. Okay. So first step is we substitute. See here, we use the distance formula again, and this was x sub one, this was y sub one. We just substituted it from our point from the point given to us, which is two zero. We substitute the derivative we made, which was x prime and y prime. And that's what happens. You get a d squared is equal to quantity 4 cos t minus 2 quantity squared plus quantity 2 sine t quantity squared. So we simplify that and we get this. 16 cos squared t plus 4 minus 8 cosines t plus 4 sine squared t. So basically you just, you know, simplify this and simplify that. Next. We have to recall that sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to 1. So that's the that, that's basically the one we have where it's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Okay. Now 
we flip to the next page. So now that we're done recalling, let's continue. So this is what we had a while ago. This thing. So since we want to apply that cos square, squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1, then now you see a 4 sine squared t. We're going to have to separate these. We're supposed to get a 4 cos squared t there. So what you do here is you make it 12 and 4. 12 cos squared t plus 4 cos squared t. There. Now you just put that there. Put this there so that it's easier for us to see. Then you add the plus 4 and minus 8 cos, square, cos t. So next step, 12 cos, t, cos squared t plus, then you distribute out. 4 quantity cos squared t plus sine quant sine squared t quantity plus 4 minus 8 cos t. So, this is what we have so far. Since that is just equal to 1 and 4 plus 4 is equal to 8, then our d squared is equal to 12 cos squared t plus 8 minus 8 cos t. That means that our d will be equal to the square root of the whole thing. The square root of 12 cos squared t minus 8 cos t plus 8. Next, and this is the final step, we have step 3. So for step 3, we go back to the equation we got from step 1. Let me just flip it. This is what we got for, for step 1. There we go. I, re I rewrote it in step 3. There. So it's this one. So, we again just substitute in the x sub 2 and x sub 1s, there. This one is x prime, which is this, same thing, that one. And this is also y prime, this one. And then substitute everything in, over d. Then once you have this, simplify, just multiply this to both, and multiply that with that. And then boom, that's what happens. It's still over D. And then you simplify that, you combine like terms. So you have two like terms here, you have this one, box that out, and this one. So negative 16 plus 4, that's negative 12 sine t cos t plus 8 sine t over D. Now that we have this, we, re we look back at step 2, we see this one. So remember our step 2, we got this. D is equal to that. So I'll just go back here. There. So we just substituted D with that. And that's our final answer. That is the rate at which the distance is changing. As it approaches the point two zero. Okay, so our second question is at what rate is the distance changing when T is equal to pi over 4? So here, we're looking for d, d over dt, when t is equal to pi over 4 or equal to 45 degrees. So let's just note that sine pi over 4 is equal to cosine pi over 4 because both of them equal to square root of 2 over 2. Here, we get the d that we've solved in the... We get d that we solved here in step 2 up here sorry there and then we just substitute it with these so we substitute it with the we substitute the t with pi over 4 that's basically it and then we simplify and then we move on to d d over dt which we got from step 1 which is here okay let's go to that so basically, same thing, we, change, we substitute all the t's with pi over 4's, and then we get that. And then there's an over d, so we put the d there. Then we simplify it, we change all the pi over 4 equals square root of 2 over 2. Simplify it further, square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 over 2 is just equal to 1 half. And this can cancel the 8 and the 2 and make it a 4. Even further, 12 times 1 half is just 6. And then, after you get this, you calculate it, you get this. 
negative 0 0.11879 or approximately negative 0 0.12. So what does that mean? That means that our ellipse is moving counterclockwise. And we have no units of measurement here because none was given. So basically, yeah, it's moving counterclockwise. And as I've learned from a talk with a teacher, that this is important since our problem is an ellipse. It's an elliptical pattern. There's a particle there and it's moving counterclockwise. So that basically looks like the movement of planets. Whereas like a lot of planets there, all their par particles are planets. The elliptical rings are where the planets go and you know, that could be the sun. So basically, our particle is moving counterclockwise. Thank you. So a horizontal throw is 16 meters long and its ends are isosceles trapezoids with an altitude of 4 meters here, a lower base of 4 meters there, and an upper base of 6 meters. So water is being poured in the throw at a rate of 10 meters cubed per minute. So that's a change in height over time. So how fast is the water level rising when the water is 2 meters deep? So first of all, we could look at the isosceles triangle, uh, isosceles triangle, isosceles trapezoid this way. Where there's a rectangle inside and you just... So the formula for the... To find the volume of the isosceles trapezoid, it's area multiplied by the length. So, the first thing you do is the you, you find the area. So, the formula for the area is 1 half B1 plus B2 or 1 half A plus B uh, mul multiplied by H multiplied by the length of the total thing. So I inputted the values. Uh, 1 half B1 is this. Then B2 is this plus 2x since the height keeps changing over time and multiplied by the height. Then multiplied by the length of the total thing. So I inputted the values then you input the values then you uh, multiply it and you get 8h multiplied by 8 plus 2x so you simplify that you get 64h plus 16xh so what you're trying to find here is the dv over dt so you already have the dh over dt so what you need to do now is get rid of the x so what you do here you, you have to look at the side of this you have to make a right triangle out of the side of this trapezoid it's it's almost like the 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 same as the cylinder, but you know, to get the height, but it's not, it's not the same. So, x over h here is equals to one over four, which is which one is the length of the topmost since the total is six and four four six. So, x over h is equals to 1 over 4, then you just transpose, then you get x is equals to 1 fourth h. Then after that, from this, you substitute this x value in this, so you get v is equals to 64h, plus 16 multiplied by 1 fourth h multiplied by h. You simplify that, you get 64h multiplied by 4h squared. So now you get the derivative of the whole thing, which is dv over dt is equals to 64 dh over dt plus 8h dh over dt. So yeah. Then here you you input the values of dh over dt which is 10 then 8 over 2 then you multiply it by the height 8h here the instant height or the the height of the water then you get 640 plus 160, then you get dv over dt is equals to 800 meters cubed per minute. Meaning that the water is, the water level is rising at 800 meters cubed per minute.